In this video, I'm going to take a look at how menu items can be logically grouped using separators to reflect their functionality. Let's consider this computer program, this window, and I'm going to come to here, I'm going to click on to file, and you can see we get this menu appearing, and there are five items in the menu. Now, it's a demonstration program, so I'm just going to show what happens when I click on this item. You can see here it says new file selected, and I'll go through each one in turn and you can see a string is printed here and if I click on this one for example you can see it says here save as selected and finally if I click on exit you can see that it says exit is selected now in reality if this was a proper program coming here and clicking on this would bring up a dialog box and that dialog box would allow us to open a file but here I've simply got some straightforward code that will just show us something is happening when we click on these items in the menu. Now if I select file again and we have a look, if you look at these two items here, new file and open, that's dealing with the creation of a file or the opening of a file. And here you can see we can save the file or we can save as and we save it as when we want to give the file a different name. And here we have exit so it could be argued that these are logically similar these are logically similar and obviously exit quits the application so what would be useful is to give the user of your program a notion that these two are similar so let's put a line here in this area and let's put another line here in this area so we can show the logical grouping of items in the menu that perform similarish tasks this is the program for the runtime we've just observed and if we look at that runtime as shown here I'm looking at it after I've clicked on this label now we should know that these five items here will need a function so that that when we click on one of them a function will execute now these are the five functions here and I'll come on to discuss those in a minute let's look at the code and we can see that this allows us to use TK into we import it this creates the window and this line creates this menu bar and of course then what we do we create here the drop-down menu and if you have a look we're adding a command which is label is assigned new file and of course that puts the new file here and we have here command equals menu underscore new underscore file now that is saying that when the user clicks on this label that appears here in the runtime we execute this now clearly this is the name of this function as you can see here so clicking onto this causes this line to execute and it says new file selected and if I just choose this one here we can see when we click on that exit we know this execute and that's because if we look at this line we can see that the label exit is put here and here what we're saying because we've made command equal to this and this is menu underscore exit we can see that that is the name of this function as you can see here then this line will add to this label which is the label here the menu that we created here which I've called my underscore drop down underscore menu as you can see here when we created the menu then of course we configure the window with the menu bar that was created on this line that also had this lot attached to it so we get this arrangement here when we look to the runtime and then naturally we have to enter the main loop now that description I've give I've covered in the previous videos on the menu within TK enter I am now going to amend this program to arrange for a line to appear here and here so we can logically group the menu items functionality into what they do that's similar so the next slide is going to show what I want the runtime to look like and then I'm going to come back to show you how to alter this computer program to achieve the changes in the runtime.
So let's have a look at the runtime now that I've altered the computer program. If I click on File, you can see that we have these appearing, these lines. So we can see we've logically grouped these two and these two here, Save and Save As, as they're clearly a logical grouping. And this has been achieved by the use of these separator lines. And if we zoom into this line, you can see that I'm sending the message to my underscore drop down underscore menu that's going to invoke this method called add underscore separator. And what this line will do is simply add the line. But where does it add the line? And you can see that I've put this line immediately after these two, after the new file and after open. And then, of course, I'm now adding the commands that will put the label save and save as on to the menu and then I'm putting this I'm adding the separator immediately after save as and before exit so if we look to the runtime here we can see that these two lines have put new file here open here and then we add the separator which is this line then we come to adding these two which is the save and the save as which get added here and then of course we come on to this line which adds the separator and that puts the separator here and then we come on to this line which adds the exit here so we can see we now have a logical grouping of the items in this sub menu achieved by this line here which i'm showing larger now so to add a separator line to a menu you use this message here now this is a message to this instance of the menu that will have been created in the program that invokes this method so this is the message to this instance that invokes this method here which is add underscore separator check out the supporting website for these videos in addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?